A look at life behind the camera lens with award-winning photojournalist Wiley Price, next on City Corner. Hi, I'm Sarah Thompson and welcome to City Corner. If you've picked up the St. Louis American for the past 30 years, you've obviously seen the work of award-winning photojournalist Wiley Price. He's the photojournalist at the St. Louis American and we're joined by him today to talk about life behind the camera, what it's like to capture those moments, those moments of pain, those moments of celebration, and those moments of everyday life. How does it feel today to be here in front of the camera? Well, it, it feels great, I guess. Uh, it's a nice place to rest. <laughs> <laughs> a little time to be in front of the there camera is go. a resting right. period. Uh -huh. So it's interesting because we were just talking off camera about the fact that even the other night, I mean, we're kind of in election season, that you're mm -hmm. pretty busy these days coming oh, off yeah. the crack. I mean, how is that for you really to have the ability to capture these moments that are essentially become long-term pieces of history, the, rep the representation of history. Well, you know, it's always exciting because you're documenting history mm -hmm. and, and you're actually standing right there. And, and a lot of times people think that that statement is overblown, but like I tell them, history takes place in every city. Just because you don't see it on the national news does not make it history. Mm -hmm. History happens right in your own backyard. Mm -hmm. and, and for St. Louis, we have lots of history to be made and that has been made oh, absolutely. Uh, simply with the elections. I mean, things change, you know, and when elections change, people's lifestyles tend to change. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's exciting to be right there when, when, you, when somebody brings up a situation and you can say to yourself, I was there. I, I remember that. I was standing right there. Do you feel, I mean, obviously you've been doing this for a long time and we're going to talk about, you know, sort of your history, but do you feel any sort of pressure in capturing as a photographer, also as an artist, someone, do you feel any pressure in capturing that moment when you're assigned to a late breaking story if it is something about politics because your work again will be really what is the documentation of, and of that time. And I always feel that pressure because I work at a minority based newspaper mm -hmm. which means that we're small and in the world of journalism small publications get virtually no respect. I mean as many times as the American has been chosen the best black newspaper in the country the bottom line is you're still a black newspaper hmm. and in the world of journalism big time journalism you really don't exist. Hmm. So when you, when you think about the American and its accomplishments and, and me just doing my job, it's, you, your, your fame is very local. I mean, like I, I tell people, nobody knows me outside of the zip code. But, you know, <laughs> in St. Louis, in 63108, everybody knows who I am. Right. But you can go to California and say, who's Wiley Price? They would say, who is that? Mm -hmm. And that's fine. But the American has done a wonderful job of making sure that the African-American community has been covered thoroughly. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, absolutely. And, yeah, and, and, and we're, we're very good at doing the topics that are important to the community, education, employment, you know, that, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So we're very big on that. But we operate like a daily newspaper because we have deadlines every day. Is that something that, as a photojournalist, you kind of hope for, that more people see your work outside of the... Oh, yeah. And, and, and the Internet has done that. I mean, you know, up, up until the internet, the American was only known inside the zip code mm -hmm. of St. Louis, Missouri. But mm -hmm. the internet has garnished us international recognition because people can click in and see what you're doing and be in Japan or be in Europe someplace. And every day, it's even when we did a story on who hits our website, we were getting lots of hits in Europe and Asia only to find out because of the military. Interesting. People from St. Louis who are stationed overseas are still keeping in touch with St. Louisans mm -hmm. by reading the St. Louis mm -hmm. American on the internet. Well, let's talk about some of your work. We kind of pulled together a collection of some of your most memorable um, <laughs> and interesting stories. And one was just covering what you covered in the past couple of years, President Obama. Yes. Here in St. Louis. What yes. was that like? Uh, that, that was a lot of fun because, you know, the hype started very, very early with mm -hmm. him. And the picture that you're looking at now, that was taken in Springfield the day, or in Springfield, Illinois, the day he announced who his running Oh, okay. was going to be. Okay. So yeah, so when he announced Biden, it was at that event. And when he came out, all those hands reaching up to hmm. this guy, it made such a powerful image. And I was hitting him up. Probably by the time it took him to walk down the corridor to the podium, I had probably shot 80 frames. 
Now, you've shot, yes. in terms of shooting so many politicians in here, you know, here's President Obama again in the prayer circle. This is here in St. Louis? Yes, down at the convention center. And that's, that has become the most famous picture I've ever taken. Really? Because it got away from us very quickly. Once it was posted to the internet, everybody started pulling it down hmm. and just sending it everywhere. So many of my friends who live out of town kept sending me the picture going, you're a photojournalist. You, you would appreciate this shot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when I would write them back and say to them, I took that. You know, they were like, Did you oh, not it was taken in St. Louis. Right. Because even uh, a good friend of mine that I went to high school with, I had to send her the front page of the American to prove to her that, that I really the, did take the shot. Because she thought, well, I don't think this picture was even taken in St. Louis. I said, yes, it was taken yeah. in St. Louis. So I, I, wanna, I wonder, is there something do you feel about in covering so many politicians and then covering President Obama or when he was president-elect, was there anything different that you noticed about, obviously, the first African-American president? Was mm -hmm. there a feeling, since you have covered so many elections and so many things, was there a feeling? Do you feel that as a photographer, sort of an energy or a buzz or you an do. essence when you're you in do. a certain and, environment? And with Obama, he had created this euphoria mm -hmm. that, you know, I'm the next coming. Mm -hmm. And it really felt like that. I was like, boy, this is kind of strange. Hmm. These people are just going gaga. I mean, I've never seen a politician actually have a rock star status. Mm -hmm. And you forgot he was a politician <laughs> because people were just screaming sure. at him and would stand for hours just to see him. Yeah. I mean, and, and everywhere he went, it was that way. And when it came to St. Louis, it was no different. Mm. So that was very exciting. And what a job for you to, to capture that. I mean, just to have to have literally that job and capturing yes. that. I mean, that's just uh, it's quite beautiful. I have some other stuff um, that have gone on here in St. Louis um, that are sometimes more of the news, you know, news breaking, cutting, mm -hmm. you know, the news breaking um, events that happen. One mm -hmm. is, uh, this is actually a somber sort of photo. And tell me about this one. Uh, this is John Thornton's um, press conference. The former mayor of Washington Park, Illinois, was murdered like that morning. And we had this press conference in, in front of City Hall mm -hmm. that afternoon. And I didn't realize it at the time, that's his sister and that's his daughter and son standing there embraced. And the guy in the far right hand corner is giving a prayer. And I just so happened, I was on my knees trying to stay low for the televisions mm -hmm. and they stopped right in front of me. And that's where they stood. So this, this image was very powerful for me. And seeing too that his son carries his name sure. and he's the assistant fire chief of the very city. When you're in a situation like that, I mean, do you, is the job of a photojournalist really to clearly not be, you know, noticed essentially? Yeah, you, you don't want to be intrusive, but mm -hmm. you do want to capture the emotional moment of, how the, you, of the event. And uh, so have you, when you're around these kind of events, you also, we also have the Kirkwood, you know, church burning and the Kirkwood City Hall Memorial, we'll uh -huh. throw those up. I mean, how do you, how have you learned over the years to sort of your behavior? Do you just kind of, to be able to get in to capture it, but at the same time not feel offensive to those who are affected by what's going on at the moment? I've always told people, I try to hide in plain sight. Hmm. I mean, really, when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm at an event, I always say to myself, you're invisible. Nobody can really see you. So walk around like you're invisible. And you know, and I've, I've actually had to teach the community that, that when you see me, don't look at me. Just hmm. continue to do what you're doing and let me capture it. You know, and everything will be fine. And uh, even in the picture with uh, Norville Brown's funeral, mm -hmm. I was standing right across the street and a police officer came up to myself and Odell Mitchell and said to us, if you guys stand right here, I think you're going to get the picture you want. And he was right, because Hearst pulled up right in front of us. Everybody was lined up. And when that picture won an award, they had made mention of the fact that I had the officers, his family, and the community all in the same frame. Huh. So you, you can't really clearly see the casket clearly, but you know what it is. And are you thinking so. about that when you're shooting, like at, at this funeral, yes. and obviously there's this, you're, you're clearly yes. there for a job in yes. addition to... And also, too, when you get on site, you've already made a set of pattern for yourself of where this shot could be coming from. So you're kind of standing in that general location. It's like, well, if anything happens, I should be right here, and my line of sight should be pretty clean. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that's also important because there's lots of people moving around, you know, there's nothing that stays where they go, okay, we need you to keep this area clear for the media. That never happens. Have you ever been sort of overcome emotionally with something that you're covering? I mean, is, is it- Homicides do that for me. Homicides do that for me. Uh, it, it just, and because especially when they're, when they're minors, because before they can move a body, they have to bring a member of the family to the scene. I see. And I, I've even been at homicides, and, and I, I shouldn't say just homicides, but any kind of wrongful death, like of a child. I, I remember um, a kid was hit by a, a truck after getting off a school bus, right at Whittier and Page, and they had to find his mother and bring her to the scene. And so we were standing there, and everybody was waiting for that shot. I mean, you have to. Huh. 
-hmm. And so they had already put up the uh, barriers where we couldn't see the kid, but when the mother came over and she looked down into that roped off area, you could see in your mind what she was seeing. That was her child laying there. And she put her hand over her mouth and all you could hear was his motor drives just lighting up you know, the, the, the area. And because that was the shot. Hmm. That was literally it's the kind shot. of surreal, isn't it? Because oh, you're, it is. you're capturing in these it moments is. is such extreme emotion, but your job is is to actually capture that for other people yes, to understand that. I, I'm always curious with photojournals and writers and reporters that sometimes are there ever not so much disagreements, but knowing what the reporter is going to write. I mean, do you have to think also along the lines of what the writer is going to? You also do both. I know for the St. Louis American, but are there times where you ever find yourself in a? You know, slight, not disagreement, but how do I capture this or knowing that a certain writer has a different Normally style? Normally that happens at like press conferences when you, you go there expecting one person to be the focus of the story and during the press conference that focus will change to this person to that person. And then I walk over to the reporter and say to them, I said, you know, our focus was this guy, but now it's this woman because of what she just said to us. And so normally you're in agreement with that. Mm -hmm. And so it, it works out just fine. But stories can, the focus of a story can change at a moment's notice. And sure. you're standing right in front of it. But you have to be listening. Mm -hmm. And I, I tell young photographers that all the time that you still have to listen when you shoot. Mm -hmm. Don't think that your job is so visual that audio doesn't play into the game. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I've been told photographers, you've had, you probably have no idea how many times you've heard a picture before you saw it. Mm -hmm. And they look at you like, what do you mean you heard a picture? I'm like, well, you do. You hear something and you turn to see what that is. You heard it first. You right. didn't see it first, you heard it. Right. And so you have to be conscious of that. I also think you have um, a lot of everyday life photos, which I think are actually some of um, just your most remarkable work, really, that I've seen, where you're able to capture, we're going to throw some of those up before we go to break, but it's capturing, um, you know, these are some in the arts, but That's students. The artists. Like, um, like for, for instance, a picture like that, how many times have you seen a, a multiple black children playing the violin. Mm -hmm. You just mm -hmm. don't see that shot. Mm -hmm. And that was at the public school's uh, fine, uh, fine arts concert at the Fox. And it was a wonderful shot. And even this shot here, this is the last scheduled game at the old Bush Stadium. Mm -hmm. And I'm running to my car to make deadline for the paper. And I hear this guy playing, but because he had his back to me, I couldn't find him until I walked up on him and I was coming from the back. And I just walked right past him, I turned around and went plip, plip, and then he looked up at me. And once, and once, once he looked up at you, the picture's over. Right. The, 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 the true emotional content of the picture is gone. It's when they're not looking. So it looks like the first three frames. And the picture of this gentleman uh, giving his daughter a ride in a wagon, I just took that picture two weeks ago, going through the loop. Huh. And it was a, it was a hot day, that. it was a hot Saturday afternoon. And no, he that's... looked back at it because she was trying to tell him, look, there's a guy taking our picture across the street. Yeah. He looked at her like, what are you talking <laughs> about? Because well, I was actually hiding behind cars. Yeah. Because, you know, children are magnets for cameras. Yeah. They can feel you from a mile it's away. Like a, that's like a modern-day Norman Rockwell, yeah, you know. Really in and her hat it looks great on her. I, well, we're going to we're going to come back and talk about um, sort of I want to get into some of your influences and how you actually got into photojournalism. Right. So we have so much to talk about with Wiley Price, again, award-winning photojournalist right here on City Corner. Please stay with us right now. Yo, what up? It's your man Nelly, and you watch your STL TV. Experience the loop all day. Have a kit so you're ready for any emergency. Develop a plan for what you and your family will do before disaster strikes, and stay informed during severe weather any way you can. Abandoned and lost. From the dark, cold streets of the city to a cage in the local shelter to heaven, your lap.
Hi, I'm Sarah Thompson and welcome back to City Corner. Today we're speaking with Wiley Price. He's an award-winning photojournalist for the St. Louis American. He's been there for over 30 years. I mean, how did you discover photography? I discovered photography while I was a student at UMSL, majoring in music. I was supposed to be this great jazz trombonist and uh, I've been playing all my life since fourth grade. And I came home one day during the Christmas holidays. I had done four gigs over the weekend. When I totaled up my checks, I only had $250 in my hand. And I thought, this isn't going to work for me. Hmm. Not at all. And I, I knew I didn't want to teach in the public schools. So, and my band director told me, he said, you're going to have to find something else to do. And I'd always had an interest in photography, but never pursued it. And that's when I decided, I said, let me try this photography thing out and see what that, what, what that looks like. And it's interesting about that, even as a child, I always said if I was ever a photographer, I wanted to be a photojournalist hmm. because I had seen Gordon Park's work mm -hmm. in Life magazine. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's interesting how he influenced me even long before I even chose that mm -hmm. because of the power of his images. Mm -hmm. And my, my mother, thank God, used to bring home Time and Life and Look mm -hmm. magazine mm -hmm. and just throw them on the table. Mm -hmm. And so I would look through them. And, and, I, and even as a kid, I always knew you can tell what a story is about by simply looking at the picture. Mm -hmm. Gordon Parks I, um, is, I mean, just absolutely remarkable, and I'm clearly not the only person who thinks that. And we're looking at some of his work from mm -hmm. Life magazine, as you mentioned. And for people who don't know or maybe do know, he was the first African-American photojournalist, photographer, photo photographer yes. for Life magazine. Yes, he was. And uh, he covered everything from what some people don't realize, fashion mm -hmm. and a lot of artistic photos, but also captured poverty and segregation as we're looking at. And uh, you know what, I, his work is literally embedded in the mind of like, I think the memory of people from a certain era. I mean, when you think of civil yes, rights, even if you didn't live during that time, you think of an image that Gordon Parks took, which I think speaks to just his just amazing talent really mm -hmm. as a photojournalist. I mean, when you think of someone like Gordon Parks and especially as an African-American photographer who really said that, you know, in all his works and afterwards his book said, don't let race sort of hold you back and don't let it influence, mm -hmm. don't let it influence you or deter you from pursuing something. I mean, has that directly correlated to, to your sort of profession? And without question, without question. One thing nice about photojournalism, it tends to guide our culture. Mm -hmm. People are moved emotionally by still images, more so than video, because with a still image, it's frozen there and it kind of locks into your mind mm -hmm. that, oh my God, is this where we're headed? And, and yes, we are. I mean, you can look at lifestyles of culture and see that photojournalism has led the way. Mm -hmm. And particularly in Gordon Parks' time when TV was not mm -hmm. as big news uh, newswise it was not as big publications ran the news industry mm -hmm. and so people looked to see what was going on in the world by opening up a sheet of paper of some kind be it magazine or newspapers and it wasn't until like the 90s when tv came in and just kind of like really overpowered sure. uh publications mm -hmm. but you know with the with the influx of cnn and, and cable stations like that 24-hour news they had to step up to the plate and the newspapers drove that I pulled a quote um, from Gordon Parks where was, he says the camera can be a very powerful instrument against discrimination, against poverty and racism. Mm -hmm. And really saying capturing that. And I know so many of assi his assignments were to do that, were to go photograph something that would move people to change their attitudes. Mm -hmm. Has that been the case in some of the work that you've done? Have you covered something and gotten feedback later on about how it's affected someone's life or changed their notion of something? When, when people talk about the high murder rate among young African-American men, Every time I've shot a homicide, when we write about a homicide in the city of St. Louis, it gets no response. When I show a picture in the paper, the phones are lit up. I mean, even the, the, the receptionist say to me, oh, you got that picture of that kid in the paper today that, that, that was murdered. The phones are ringing off the hook because people are upset with me because I would show that. Hmm. And, and they, 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 they consider it to be a negative to the community, but I always say to them, now is the time to do something. If this is upsetting you like that, then let's talk about it. Let's sit down and discuss what we can do to change this trend among African-American men killing themselves. But it's always the photo that sparks that interest. It's never the story. Right. People read the story and go, oh, that's a shame. They see the picture and they're suddenly outraged. Mm -hmm. And so, like I said, it guides the culture into moving it into a positive direction, mm -hmm. always. Yeah, and it's really interesting too how 
how photo, photography and images can relate to memory and empathy. And like mm -hmm. you said, people see themselves, it can see themselves in that image. If it's a mother standing over her yes. child who's been killed, or if it is just mm -hmm. a, people can see those images and they, tra you know, they sort of impose themselves there and think about that. And I think it has a more visceral uh, reaction. Um, going back to Gordon Parks, I did pull one other sort of quote, and I this one I wanted to do, use this to transition into some of the more lighter work that you used. Okay. Um, and it, he says it was difficult, you know, some of the things that he photographed. And he said, mm -hmm. um, and so he goes on to talk about some of the things getting into art and fashion and some of the other things later in his life mm -hmm. that he uh, started to photograph. And I wanted to talk about with you, you're kind of known also for photographing celebrities, mm -hmm. capturing that not just for the St. Louis American, but other stuff that you do. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some photos I want to throw up um, of the everyday life, um, too. So let me first, let's see what we have on there. Um, I think I have the kids sledding down Art Hill. Okay. And I wanted to look at, um, look at some of those and, and, and talk about the lighter side of what you do because obviously you're capturing um, there we have the kids sure. letting down Art Hill. Anytime times it snows you want to run to Art Hill because that's where everybody gathers. Mm -hmm. Now the problem with this is when you really want to get a good shot of it you have to put yourself in harm's way. Mm -hmm. So I saw these kids in this big <laughs> under tube and I said to them I'm going to go down this hill halfway down the hill if you just come by me just come right on by and act like I'm not there. Sure enough they did it and it was perfect the shot was perfect they were coming right at me Right as I shot this frame, they clipped me, and I went up, I did a flip. I remember did looking really? I remember looking <laughs> down and seeing the sky, and I thought, oh my God, and I hit my back, and I felt my camera just roll off, and my lens broke off the camera and rolled down the hill right behind them. Really? And oddly enough, in oh, that frame, the, <laughs> COO, the COO of my newspaper is standing at the top of the hill and witnessed me getting plowed by these kids on the tube. And I was fine, but I just had to run down the hill and get my lens and pick it up and come on back up, you know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, sometimes a good picture costs. Sure, sure, yeah. especially on that, on, yeah, the, exactly. on that end. We have the Boy Scout here. I've always wanted to do this because you always see white scouts doing this and nobody had ever captured a black scout doing this. Hmm. So I, I went out there, this is Memorial Day weekend when, they, when the scouts put the flags down. I picked out a kid and they're on a lot of uh, then there are not a lot of black scouts, mm -hmm. so you don't have a lot to choose from. But I wanted to choose a kid in the scout shirt. I followed him around for about 45 minutes. Even his mother was like, don't you have enough pictures? I said, no, but I'm looking for the picture. Mm -hmm. And when I shot this picture, he was tired now. Mm -hmm. So he had these bundle of flags and he's walking over and he, and he has a look on his face like, okay, I've had enough of this now. Mm -hmm. At first it was exciting. Mm -hmm. And then after about 45 minutes, he's like, okay, I, you know, I think I've had enough. So we're walking back. I could see he was fatigued and that was the shot I had. And that shot meant something. Mm -hmm. You know, you can see on his face that, you know, this is a chore. Yeah. Um, this is really work. Right. There's, there's lots of flags to put down and we have a lot to do. And again, it's like, and this is, uh, well, we'll go into this. This yes. is Harold Russell, the yes. late Now, magician. the funny thing about this shot, I had him throw those cards at me like 30 times. <laughs> And oddly enough, I was trying to get the face of the cards. There's only two of those frames like mm -hmm. this. And it was so worth it because, I mean, it doesn't cover his face. A lot of the cards were backwards or they were in his face. His hand was too high. Something was happening. And like I said, just two frames of this where I had two face cards. So I was very happy. So we're going to get into some of your, the photographs that you've done of celebrities. I mean, do you feel that it's a good balance where you're sort of on one end photographing, photographing late breaking news, you're at funerals, murder scenes, but then at the same time you have the ability to photograph Oprah or President Obama or doing even like Margaret Bush Wilson doing a nice right. sort of portrait shot of someone. I mean, do you pr prefer one over the other? I would prefer shooting everyday people. Okay. I mean, if, if, if somebody said to me, you can never shoot anybody famous again, I would say, okay, great. Because mm -hmm. I'm good with my own community. Mm -hmm. I'm good inside my community. And this picture of Margaret Bush Wilson, the, 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 the great shot about this is when you stand in front of a subject and they already know you and appreciate your work, they give you the image that mm -hmm. you're looking for because they know you're going to do a great job. Mm -hmm. And like I tell people all the time, the subject is 90% of the battle. Sure. If you don't give me the good shot, I can't take it. Hmm. And sometimes it just happens. And, and in this picture with, with Oprah and uh, the young lady from, from Sweetie Pies, I was looking for something different. And this only took a second. They were like, yay! And then it was over. <laughs> the and, classic and, and, Oprah. And I had to raise my camera above everybody's head because I'm standing like on the second row of all the photographers. And I thought I didn't get that. And the Sweetie Pie sign is in the back. You see media people, see people standing around. It worked. No, I love that. And then Janet, so you, did you, you photograph Janet, is this a, yes. a performance? That's at, that's, at, that's at the Fox. We only got three songs and they cheated us. They only gave us two and a half songs because <laughs> the photographers were kind of like, 
you know, spreading their time out over that three songs. Yeah, and I said to them, is... don't do that. Shoot as much as you can, as fast as you can, because they'll come and get us at a moment's notice. Most of the photographers that shoot concerts like this know that that can happen very quickly. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing you can do about it. When they say, let's go, let's go. Yeah, that's a beautiful, and so, that's a really And beautiful I wanted something photograph. different from her. So when I shot that, she just kind of like looked the other way real quick and I went, and I thought, okay, maybe you have it, maybe you don't. But I was happy to see that it was sharp. That's beautiful. And this is Danny Glover. Uh, Danny Glover, this young lady, uh, that is the mother of Reginald Clements, who's on death row right now. And again, it just took two or three seconds. He went over and gave her a hug, mm -hmm. and that was the end of it. Mm -hmm. But I wanted something other than the two of them standing at the podium. Mm -hmm. So this embrace says everything. You know, it, it shows the compassion he has for her and the work that this mother's putting in to save her son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think lastly, we have uh, this is Alvin uh, Alvin Ailey. Ailey. This is taken from the back of the fox. So mm -hmm. I'm a long way away, and I'm shooting it with a 300 millimeter lens praying on every frame that I've got something. Because, you know, dance is never well lit. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's lit for visual, but not to be photographed. And there's a big difference, because you, you lose a lot of faces and you lose detail a lot of times in costumes. So do you have a dream sort of project that you'd like to shoot? I mean, here you are, for people to get an idea, you know, at home mm -hmm. watching this, that you're a photojournalist every day you are, before, as soon as you leave here, you're probably gonna go on assignment somewhere, mm -hmm. you're turning around developing those photos. I mean, is there ever in the course of everything you've seen over the past 30 years plus of your career, that is there a dream project that you have yet to do? My dream project is a continuation of the book I did 12 years ago, Left Every Voice and Sing, which was a simple book of portraits done in black and white of people in the community who have really brought the community forward, escalated them to where we need to be. And I like doing that because I think these people are always overlooked. You know, the Wayman Smiths, Dr. Gibbons, Dr. Suggs, you know, Margaret Bush Wilson, all these people work very hard for the community, but they get very little recognition for it. And I think portraits are the best way to do that because they last forever. Mm -hmm. And when I did the first book, we did 100 portraits, and I was very proud of that book because I felt like I did a great job. And I actually idolize these people into history. For the next two or 300 years, you will always know what this person looks like and you have some idea of what their background was concerning the African American community. And do you, for any young person thinking about, or just anyone in general, thinking about getting into photojournalism or mm -hmm. photography, I mean, what, would you, what, you, what is your advice to them? My, my advice to them is to find a small publication and work for free as long as you can. Working for free, you garner so much information about your profession and how to do it. You, uh, sometimes getting paid is secondary. Mm -hmm. I mean, truly secondary. When you're around people who know how to do something, if you just stand back and observe and watch the way they go about their business, that speaks volumes for what you plan to do with the profession when you get into it. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to respect the profession in that way. Don't worry about getting paid. Learn to do the job well. Uh, the one thing bad about photography is that digital has dummied the job mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks they're a photographer now because they've got this autofocus camera <laughs> and I can put it in my pocket, you know. I'm yeah. like, but you know, you're really not doing the profession, you're not giving the profession any respect that way. Okay. So, it's, well, thank it's, you. I wish, I mean, I, there's so many things that you've covered, and I know because I'm a fan of your work and reading The American, and I feel like we you. can talk to you for, for an hour, but thank you for being here and you're sharing welcome. with us your experiences and obviously going through some of your work. So thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. And thank you at home for watching City Corner. If you want to find more information um, about Wiley Price or the show, you can head to our website at stltv.net, or you can visit our YouTube page to watch clips of the show. Thank you for joining us, and keep us here on STL TV.